worldwide, the number of network connections is continuously increasing. This allowed innovations, such as cloud computing and the associated applications. When, in the past, buildings were only using local networks, with isolated operational technology communications, and mainly local operations, then the possibilities of cyber attacks were for sure limited. Nowadays, we talk about connected buildings, where the operational technology and the information technology converges, where operations are executed via cloud systems and mobile devices. This, for sure, exposes the systems into an increase of cyber attack risk. For that reason, the BACnet Committee released, in November 2019, the BACnet Secure Connect, as addendum to the protocol, which is a new data link, like BACnet MS, TP or BACnet, IP, that offers encrypted traffic to prevent M2M communication against tampering, an authentication mechanism to restrict access to a project, with an IT-friendly way to do secure building automation communication. Additionally, it is independent of BACnet revision. PXC7 Automation Controller fully supports the BACnet Secure Connect, ensuring that the communication with embedded web interface is encrypted via HTTPS Secure Protocol. Certificate handling is also granted, as well as the support of signed firmware. To further increase the security, strong password protection policy is adopted, and it is also possible to permanently disable the WLAN connection. As we know already, PXC4, PXC5 and PXC7 IP controllers support BBMD and foreign device table routing, functions needed because of the broadcast messaging blocked by routers. And this is mainly because BACnet IP is based on TCP, UDP protocols. BACnet Secure Connect is not based on UDP, and so it does not depend on network broadcast messaging. For that reason, it is no longer needed to configure BBMD or FDT functions into the building automation system, when devices are located into different subnets, and that definitely improves the engineering efficiency. So, let's now briefly explain how the BACnet Secure Connect works, with some easy example. In this building, the management station, located into the basement, lays on a dedicated subnet. On the other floors, automation controllers and touch panels are running on other subnets, different than each other's. In a typical BACnet IP environment, this would require the usage of BBMD or FTD functions. Now, the green lines represent the physical links, which are in this case configured with a daisy chain topology through the controllers to the network switches that are comprising, together with the router placed to the basement, the backbone of the building. BACnet Secure Connect goes over the physical link, creating a logical perspective, where one of the controllers can work as network hub, or even router, centralizing the communication in a logical star topology, independently on how the other nodes are physically wired, or if the subnets are different. So, in this example, we ignore the physical wiring, and we consider the basement, the second and the third floors being part of the same BACnet Secure Connect logical network, while the first floor is still running on a normal BACnet, IP or BACnet, MSTP. The PXC7 on the third floor will work as hub, so that, every single node of the BACnet Secure Connect network, directly communicate with it, even if they are running on different subnets, using an authenticated and encrypted communication. On the other hand, the first floor would not be able to communicate with the rest of the building, as it is not part of the BACnet Secure Connect network. This communication principle, adopted by the BACnet Secure Connect, is called, Hub and Spoke. BACnet Secure Connect also offers a redundant solution, with the possibility to configure a second PXC controller as failover hub. This solution covers the cases in which, for instance, the primary hub gets failure, so that the failover hub takes in charge the hub role, ensuring the continuity of the encrypted communication. The examples we just showed were extremely simplified, 
splitting the back net secure connect networks, based on the floors. In the reality we have to take into account that some products don't support back net secure connect yet, for instance, the Dezigo control point touch panels. So, we need to introduce the combined perspective. In this new example, we represent now with a dark pink color, the BACnet IP network 1 in the basement, where the management station is located, and with a lighter pink color, the BACnet IP network 2 for the floors, where the automation controllers and touch panels are located. With an additional light blue colored square, we represent the BACnet Secure Connect network, that are anyway, included, into the BACnet IP networks. The management station, and at least one PXC7 or 5 controller of each floor, are part of the BACnet Secure Connect, where the PXC controller of the first floor is working as Secure Connect Hub. In order to grant the communication with the rest of the devices that are not part of the Secure Connect network, we need to introduce the IP routing function. This function, that can work also in parallel to the Secure Connect Hub function on the PXC5 and, or, PXC7 devices, allows the controllers to forward the messages by standard BACnet routing mechanism, to their own BACnet IP network, ensuring that every device will be able to communicate with the others. The benefits that BACnet Secure Connect brings, can be summarized in Reducing the engineering effort, especially in large networks Reducing network traffic, avoiding the BBMD and FDT functions, and centralizing the traffic to the primary hub, or fallover hub controllers. And, most important, making safe the communication, with the encryption and the authentication.